were so amazed at his teaching. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word.
Sunday began a week where most of the events led up to the brutalization and death of our Messiah. It's important for us to remember that between the triumphal uh, entry of Jesus on Palm Sunday and the victory of the resurrection on Easter Sunday, that there was some serious inhumanity and evil taking place. And it was directed solely at Jesus. At the Lenten Bible study that I shared this, uh, this past couple of weeks, um, was based on a book entitled 24 Hours That Changed the World. And it was written by a Methodist pastor named Adam Hamilton. Uh, Adam Hamilton happens to be the pastor of the largest, Amer uh, largest Methodist church in America. Uh, about 16,000 people worship there on weekend. Uh, he wrote these in his book, these words in his book. There is one word we need to hear about Jesus' suffering and death. And that concerns the nature of sacrificial love. Remember that word, sacrificial love. He has set an example for us of a kind of love that alone had the power to save humanity from its self-destructive ways. Sacrificial love transforms enemies into friends, shames the guilty into repentance, and melts hearts of stone. The world is changed by true demonstrations of sacrificial love and by selfless acts of service. You know, it would take you a little while to read through the gospel accounts of Holy Week. I read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Begin with the Palm Sunday story. Actually, it begins in chapter 21 of Matthew. And, and read through all of, of the rest of Matthew, and then find the Holy Week story in Mark, and Luke, and John, and read through those. And to do so, it might take you three hours. If you're a slow reader like me, it might take you four. It's something I'm going to do this week. It's going to be my devotional time this week, is to read through the four Gospels and the Passion story of Jesus in all four of those. So that when I come to Easter, Sunday, I'm going to uh, for me to reflect upon all of that. And I'd like to invite you to do the same thing. Begin with Matthew 21 and just read those portions of the scripture in Matthew, Mark, and John. Now, it might only take us three or four hours to read through that, but if you were to seriously study it or reflect upon it, it would take a lifetime before you would be able to understand or comprehend all of the nuances and, and all that Jesus had done for us in that one week of his life. It's just incredible. Much of it would be disturbing if you really took time to think about it. Now, we usually don't take the time. The reason is because we know how the story ends, don't we? We know how the story ends. It ends with Jesus rising up from the grave, victor over Satan and sin and death. Jesus goes on to become Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We know and we celebrate that as Easter because we know the story as Christians. And so the earlier stuff, the stuff earlier in the week, the stuff of the suffering, pales in importance. And sometimes it's easy for us to just let slip on. But here's the lesson for today. We can't ignore that stuff. We cannot ignore it. You see, Jesus challenged the terrible way in which the religious leaders had corrupted the faith. He challenged that for a reason. And Jesus allowed Judas, who was one of his disciples and one of his best friends, to betray him for a reason. Jesus uh, knelt down as the servant at the Last Supper to wash the feet of his disciples for a reason. Jesus allowed himself to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane for a reason. Jesus took the humiliation that was thrown at him by the, the high priests and, and the Sanhedrin, uh, Pilate, and King Herod, uh, and, and the Roman soldiers for a reason. 
that Jesus accepted the pain of the Roman whip for a reason. Jesus allowed himself to be spiked to that cross, hands and feet. Can you imagine the pain? Can you imagine the suffering? He allowed that to happen for a reason. Jesus hung on that cross, naked and bleeding for a reason. At any point in that entire week, Jesus could have called down a legion of angels to come to his defense. More so, he could have taken on the power of God Almighty because he was God Almighty. He is God Almighty. He could have taken on that power and he could have stopped the process. He could have stopped the pain. He could have stopped the humiliation. He could have stopped the cross. But he chose not to for a purpose. Have you ever taken time to reflect upon what that purpose was and is today? He did it all for you. And he did it for me also. See, he, he took the shame of that week so that you would not have to stand before God someday in your shameless state of sin. He chose to accept the beating of the temple guards and the flogging of the Roman soldiers and the crucifixion on the cross so that you would not have to receive the pain of an angry God. Jesus chose to hang on the cross. Abandoned by just about everybody he loved, he chose to experience what life without God was going to be like or could be like. That's why he cried out when he's up there on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because in that moment of time, he felt like God had forsaken him. Jesus knows what it is to be abandoned because he was abandoned himself. He chose to accept the complete sense of lostness so that you never need See, the crucifixion would be shallow if these earlier parts of the passion story were forgotten. And so we don't forget them today. And I pray that you will not forget them as you move through the rest of this week, this week called Holy Week. Christ went through all of that humiliation and pain, all of the degradation all of the suffering and brutality so that we would never have to stand before God with that kind of punishment hanging over our heads. But we deserve that kind of treatment, but we will never get it from God because Jesus took it upon himself to save you from that sin. So I pray that you take time this week to reflect upon all the events of this Holy Week. I hope that you grasp the, the depth of Jesus' love for you. Oh, we are so lucky. No, we are so blessed. Let's bow.
to challenge us and to encourage us and to place before us this story, this passion. It's such a powerful way this week that we understand the cost of our freedom. We understand that grace is free. It is a free gift that you impart to us. But we also must understand that it is not cheap. It cost Jesus all of that.